we're going. So we've had a big hitch, but we'll kick off now. Um, so uh, welcome to today's live stream of Surviving Silly Season. So as I briefly started mentioning over on Facebook, um, I'm Katie M, the Dietitian and Nutritionist at Nutrition Mind in Karingbar, and I thought this year would be a great chance to um, connect with people and do a bit of an uh, info session on how to get through December without ruining your health goals, because I'm sure everyone at the moment is experiencing um, lots of uh, events, eating out uh, and whatnot. So you want to enjoy all that without suffering for it or gaining too much weight or losing sight of your health goals. So without further ado, I'll kick off. Okay, so, oh, my just wants to work as well. Nothing's working for me today. So in this hour, but I'll try and make it a bit briefer, um, I'll go through the different health goals um, and strategies on how to stay on track, um, depending if it's weight loss you're after or if you've been struggling with digestive issues or just following a restrictive diet um, and strategies how you can um, go to your events and eat without feeling like you're missing out too much. Um, I'll cover four cornerstones of festive eating that I've put together to um, help guide you through through December um, and I want to raise people's awareness of exactly what you're eating during um, your festive occasions not necessarily to guilt or anything but if you have certain health goals in in mind um, it's it's easy to lose track if you're not quite keeping track of what's going on um, then I'll briefly talk about how to eat out and also how to mindfully eat during this time. So this you might relate to not being the, the crying kid with Santa, but maybe on the inside, this might be how you're feeling in terms of um, you're entering the December period. You've been going really well throughout the year with either, um, you know, eating healthier, sticking, sticking to your plan. Um, and now you know that the temptation is going to get thrown at you. So um, inside you're like a screaming child who uh, doesn't want it to happen or really wants it to happen. but um, you're upset that you're going to miss out and I want to reassure you that you do not have to miss out on um, the, the festivities. So if weight loss is your goal um, and I feel like this is many people's goal um, throughout the year and December they just think oh I'm going to put on a lot of weight and I'm going to feel really guilty in January trying to pull my weight back and it doesn't have to be the way. For most people I counsel rather than having weight loss as your goal, really the goal should be don't gain any weight. So rather than putting that higher expectation on yourself and either feeling disappointed if it doesn't work out or if you have to say no to events or certain meals because you don't want to throw your goal out the window, just ease up your, your expectations on yourself and say, it's okay if I, if I don't lose that two kilos this month, I'm, I'm just gonna stay the same weight. Thinking about when you are at these events, can you still eat the foods that everyone else is eating? Probably yes, but you just might need to pay a bit more attention towards portion control um, just to make sure that you, you stay on track. Weight loss or at least no weight gain is definitely possible if you just watch the portions of all the great foods you're eating um, and maybe avoid the big ticket items. So if there is a particular chocolate laden dessert or something with a lot of fat, a lot of cream, something like that, where, you know, previously you'd want a big portion of it, just scale it back or go for a different dessert um, that you still get pleasure from. Um, that's not going to be so, so um, damaging to the waistline. Um, and as I said, maybe this month will just be no weight loss. This is another thing that I speak to a lot of people about in terms of um, how to survive December if they have gut issues. So if you're, if you have really bad IBS or intolerances or some other similar condition where naturally you're on top of it and maintaining it well with your diet, the prospect of having all the Christmas um, dinners and whatnot uh, and desserts and all the treats that come with that, 
you know that you're going to suffer and it, you don't necessarily have to suffer. Um, and the way I present it is you are in control of your own body. You can choose if this event, if this meal, if this um, treat is worth it. You probably know what price you're going to have to pay for it in terms of discomfort. Um, it's you can choose to to indulge if you want to. So don't feel like you you are a slave to the plan you've been um, having already. So for instance, if you're following a low FODMAP diet for your IBS, you know, maybe you might take a break over the week of Christmas. That's okay. You might be a bit uncomfortable, but you're enjoying the food. Um, or if you are really set on staying on track, finding out what can you swap out and what can you replace that will still give you the feeling like you are enjoying in the festive foods, but um, not, not suffering as much. So definitely keep, keep on Definitely keep on track with what you're hoping to achieve with your stomach goals, but don't feel like it's the be all and end all. It's okay to suffer for a week or so and make it up afterwards. For those who are following restrictive diets for whatever reason, so um, if there are certain things that you usually don't allow yourself um, or uh, certain ways you're eating it for some sort of health benefit, don't feel like you have to go through December and be that person going, oh, sorry, I have to go without. Once again, is it time to maybe give yourself a little bit of a, a break from the restrictive diet? expand the foods that you allow in so that you can participate a bit more in in the festive events so whether it's you know the desserts or some of the cheese boards something like that allow yourself the freedom to explore a bit more um, and relax some of your rules because chances are in that maybe one week two week period where you have most of the events you're not going to do too much damage in terms of your health goals so definitely worth easing up if, if it gives you that freedom. So this is what I term my four cornerstones to good eating over the Christmas period. And basically, if you're wanting to stay on track in terms of any, any of your health goals, if you take a, a bit bits and pieces from each of these, you're probably going to be okay. So the first one is having balance, um, then moderation, definitely self-compassion and mindfulness. And we'll go through all of these um, in, in, in these uh, next few slides. But I think my overall takeaway message from today is no matter what, you deserve to participate in your um, your holiday activities, to enjoy the moment with your family and friends, and to enjoy the food in front of you. If there was ever going to be a time where you were going to relax and have the foods that you feel are a bit naughty or a bit indulgent, now is the time. So I'm a huge advocate of indulging yourself, um, usually in moderation, but maybe for a few days in this month, we can throw it out the window. So dietitian approved. <laughs> so the first cornerstone, moderation. So it's about being able to let yourself enjoy the good stuff, but just knowing the limits. And we will go through what those limits look like. And the second one we're going through now is balance. So mixing it up, having all those great indulgent foods that you don't have any other month, but just making sure we balance it out with more nutrient dense foods. And if you, know, you feel like you are having a lot of consecutive days or weeks of this festive eating, Balancing it out with some more physical activity if you can work that into your schedule as well. So when we're talking about limits and having perspective on the, what we're doing in terms of the foods we're choosing um, at, at Christmas, I like to use my Tim Tam unit of measurement because we all are familiar with Tim Tams. We know they're a bit indulgent and naughty. So um, it's a good way to anchor ourselves to know exactly how much damage are we doing with certain um, foods and meals. So one Tim Tam is equivalent to 400 kilojoules or 97 calories if you work in calories. Um, and think of that as almost a, a snack size. So one Tim Tam can almost account to the equivalent of a snack. So keep that in mind and we'll kick on. So the first place where we can 
try and check in and see how how are we going in terms of moderation is the um, grazing boards that are often presented and I've already had a few grazing boards this month so um, it's definitely been on my mind about how much damage I've been doing so far but it can easily add up so you know we've got the cheeses you've got the cured meats we've got the creamy dips which are great all the crackers the fruits, nuts and chocolates. So, you know, they're the things that you're hoping to see on a good grazing board um, and definitely dive into it. However, if we've got a standard grazing board like this one um, and a meal potentially following after this grazing board, we could do some serious damage in terms of calories, saturated fat and whatnot. To give you some example, if you just had um, a moderate amount, so let's just say several crackers, a few good dips of the, of, um, the, creamy, the creamy dip, maybe um, a few um, slices of your brie cheese, a bit of... Um, uh, uh, olives and whatnot we're looking at about 14 times worth of energy and this is being moderate I, I have definitely sat by a grazing plate and ate way too much um, and I'll just ignore those times but if you if you're keeping track you can easily have 14 times worth or 16,000 calories which in um, kilojoules which in itself is a whole almost a whole meal worth of calories. So you, you have the grazing board and then you might have a meal coming after. So already um, there's a lot being done. So just moderating how much are you eating if, if you have other things lined up afterwards. So if you are the one in charge of the grazing board this year, there are definitely things you can do to help um, improve that the state of it in terms of um, calorie density so we can make it more nutrient dense so people feel less guilty eating more of it um, and likewise there are types of foods that make you feel nice and full so you are less likely to keep going back and back for more so swapping it out for some good anti-pesto veg so we've got some examples here of any of your pickled veg they're always a favorite on the board um, using crudite and dips so crudite are just your cut, cut up veggies and you can have those with your dips and choosing the uh, the dips that are less um, calorie dense so anything that's um, cream or cheese based trying to limit and doing more things like your baba ganoush your tzatziki your hummus is any sort of veggie based dip instead um, it's going to be a lot less damaging um, in terms of crackers, so I've got a few examples of some great whole grain crackers that are available. Um, and once again, these are going to be adding so much extra fiber. So if you are doing many grazing boards across the month, these are the types of food we want to fill our day with anyway. So go to town on them. Um, and of course, having the, the cheeses, the meats um, and the other good stuff on there, but just being very mindful of, of the portion you're cutting yourself. Then the next big ticket item for our festive um, occasions are the drinks, particularly the alcoholic drinks. I think this is one that everyone sort of lets themselves loosen up. Um, and I myself today, I've poured myself a glass of wine, which isn't really wine, it's cherry juice because I don't feel like drinking right now. But here I've got an example of one standard drink in terms of wine. So this may look like a very small pour to you. And this is another place where we need to keep track. I've poured an alternate glass. So this might be a more normal size glass of wine compared to this one. Just think about yourself. On, on a good festive occasion, what one would you be more likely to pour? This one or this one? Or how many would you go back for? So this one's about three standard drinks and this one's one standard drink. This is 100 mils. And just to give you um, some perspective in terms of what that means, 100 mils is equivalent to one Tim Tam. So this, if you drink one of these, that's three Tim Tams worth. And we're getting close to a meal worth of calories just in this drink alone. And it's not necessarily about your drink choice in terms of alcohol, whether it's beer versus wine versus spirits. It's the actual alcohol itself in the drink, the pure alcohol that's quite calorie dense. So gram per gram, you're getting a lot of calories there. So 
the alcohol you drink and it doesn't feel like you're filling up on energy but it it does pack a punch so being very mindful of that likewise with the the non-alcoholic drinks we tend to load up on soft drinks punches and juices if we've got a day of desserts and sweet treats lined up we might want to just take note of how much sugar we might be intaking with our drinks as well because just in one can of coke for an example there's 10 teaspoons of sugar so if you've drunk in your coke and then you've got a big dessert lined up that's a lot of sugar you're having in a day so it's good to just be aware of how much sugar you're having so in terms of healthier drinking so this is if you're doing your alcoholic drinks um, trying to do smaller portions so doing your what your smaller pour of wine, um, drinking it slowly and keeping track of how much you're doing across the day um, or even swap it out for a non-alcoholic drink. And this picture here is one that I saw at the shops recently. Um, it's a whole range of non-alcoholic drinks done by um, some of the main brands. Um, so you can swap them out just to feel like you are still drinking the drinks that you enjoy, um, but without that alcohol too. And likewise, um, trying to be moderate so in terms of what we consider a safe drinking amount it's four standard drinks on one day so just picture four of these and that's that's what we consider safe anything much more than that it's putting you at risk of harm um, so it's it's a more moderate way of doing it if it's one day of the year and you want to let go all out go for it but if you've got um, weekend after weekend several days a week of this um, festive eating and drinking this is something to definitely consider in terms of the non-alcoholic drinks so there are so many great options available now um, there's tons of uh, no sugar sparkling waters with really nice natural flavors and I've got a few down the bottom as an example of these um, or any of your regular drinks that are zero sugar sugar free if, if you don't mind the taste of those you so if you think about the 10 teaspoons of sugar in the regular coke Coke Zero is no teaspoons of sugar. So there's a big difference there. Um, if you're on, on drinks, drink duty, you can be in charge of mixing together really nice punches. So you can mix together some really nice fruit juices, um, soda waters, mixing in fruit, and you determine how much sugar goes in there. So it, it doesn't have to be too, too much sugar, but you can still have a really nice refreshing drink. Um, so definitely consider mixing up your own punches with some of the creative options on the market. So moving on to dinner time. Um, so we've done the cheese boards, we've already had a few drinks. Now we've got the great table laden with all the meats, um, the breads, dips, cheeses, um, sauces, sides, all of that, salads as well. Um, so once again, this can be a place where we're overeating. If it's a Christmas day and you've got a lunch and a dinner lined up at two different family locations, definitely want to make sure you don't get too, um, too into the food coma realm. Um, so this is where portion control really does kick in. So in terms of doing healthier alternates, so obviously we're going to have our roast meats or our barbecue seafood or whatever it is your family's preferring, um, but just being mindful of the portion size. So whatever your protein option is, trying to do um, a single portion or so. So that's typically the palm of our hand is one portion of meat. Um, if you're on salad duty, there are amazing salads you can put together that will increase the veggie content of your meal. So once again, if you're doing um, celebrations every weekend, thinking about how can we make this a bit healthier, salads are the best thing and they do not have to be boring. There are some amazing Christmas salad recipes out there. Um, I've posted the pictures of the Coles and Woolies um, uh, magazines down below they always have the best salad recipes in there I did one once which was a kale and pomegranate salad um, there's already always so many salads in there so I, I recommend if you're trying to find new ways to get vegetables in that is, is really interesting and that the family will like look look through those because they're full of really great ideas um, and then also in terms of the creamy sauces and sides just being mindful of the portions as well. So try and do less. Um, otherwise, those meals are just going to add up and your calorie for the day is going to blow right out. 
Other strategies you can do, and this I really need to put into practice myself, is don't hover by the food table, take a plate, go away and sit down. I tend to hover and so I can be a grazer all day, which is not going to be too great and I definitely suffer for it over the next few days. Um, distract yourself from going back into the kitchen or closer to the, um, the, the buffet table. So, you know, go and unbox some of those board games or go chat with some family that you haven't seen for a while. Just try and keep yourself away from going back for seconds, thirds, fourths, continual grazing um, because that will, that will help out a lot. And thirdly, eat mindfully. And we'll touch on this in a little bit. But basically, it's about being aware of what you're eating. So rather than that continual grazing where you could be talking, caught up with other people, and you just keep consuming more and more food, um, you're more present for what you're actually choosing. So if you thought back, you could think, okay, I had this amount of cheese, this amount of wine. Okay, I've probably reached my limit. Let's slow down. So you're just a bit more aware in that sense. And then dessert, so thinking of all the great things that are out on the table, so the pies, the puddings, all the creams, chocolates, there's always lots of chocolates. So this one, I'm absolutely not going to recommend any healthy alternates because why bother? I'm not going to say eat fruit or whatnot unless you want to eat fruit um, because I myself love to indulge in the desserts. It's the best thing for me on Christmas. Um, but once again, just being mindful and moderate in terms of how you're approaching it. To demonstrate how easy it is to lose perspective of how much we are eating in terms of desserts, I've got an example of one little innocent mince pies. Just have a think, how many Tim Tams do you think one mince pie is equivalent to? And think about how many mince pies would you potentially eat at Christmas? Probably not one, maybe two, three, maybe more. So one is equivalent to two and a half Tim Tams. So if you've had two, two mince pies, even without any ice cream or custard, that's already five Tim Tams. So if you think about the cheese boards, the drinks and the meals, and then we get to the desserts, you've had probably many packets of Tim Tams by this point, which is fine. Um, but if, if weight, weight loss is a goal, try, try and keep track of, of the Tim Tams you're eating in the day. So mindfulness with Christmas, I think is really important. So when indulging, make sure you do it with purpose. So not that mindless grazing. Go to the table, pick out the foods that you really love and enjoy and that you know mean a lot to you on that day. Choose a mindful portion. So thinking about, do I really need such a big scoop? Can I lessen it down? You know, if you feel like you're getting to that point point where you're pushing your stomach to the limit just to get it in maybe you've gone a bit too far so being mindful of how much can you realistically fit in and how much will you actually enjoy while you're eating it savor it so take your time to eat it don't wolf it down um, to make it all count and I think if you're going to take anything away rather than portion control or whatnot just think about how can I just eat a bit more mindfully today to really get the most joy out out of this time Eating out. So this one, um, I've already done quite a lot this month and I'm sure others uh, have got a lot of eating out sessions ahead of you. So once again, if you're thinking about your whining and your dining, um, it's going to add up. And if you're going out once a week or maybe more times a week, um, that there are strategies to, to make, make it a little less damaging. Um, so I advocate for sharing plates with people just so that you're not forced to eat a whole big uh, restaurant size portion to yourself. Um, another really good tip is choosing off of the entree um, menu instead of the main because they're always naturally a bit smaller. Um, when you're looking at the menu, try and find the lean protein options. So, you know, if there's the steaks or, um, you know, pork bellies or deep fried things or coated um, dishes, trying to find something that's a little less intense than that. So you're, you're grilled or you're steamed or you're barbecued, going for um, chicken and fish where possible. Um, that's going to be a bit lighter on the stomach trying to load up on veg. So if you can't find a dish on the menu that you feel has enough vegetable on it, if it's mainly just meat and carb or meat and sauce or whatever it is, try and 
find the little extras you can add on. So often sides, you can add on salads, um, side veggie dishes, or you could find the salad dishes and share them amongst people, trying to load up on veg wherever possible, just to once again, balance out the, the festive foods um, and moderate your alcohol and dessert. So, you know, thinking, can I just get away with one glass of wine at this time? Um, or can I share a dessert or get um, a lighter dessert? just so that I'm not doing as much damage. And I think for anyone who is feeling a lot of stress over this time about the festive eating ahead of us, because um, I, I do hear this a lot, I think it's important just to try and allow yourself to have that space to enjoy the time, thinking about what's the purpose of your of, of these festive occasions. So, you know, is it to meet up with friends and family you haven't seen in a long time? Is it to celebrate something? Um, so really allow yourself to enjoy, enjoy the festivities without feeling the guilt of the food. Um, that should really take a back seat. And the last um, cornerstone of my four cornerstones of festive eating is forgiveness. So I think we're all gonna overdo it at some point. Um, and I think it's important to think, was it worth it? Most of the time, probably yes. So, you know, you'll have memories of the day and the interactions you had, hopefully all really nice memories, the foods that came up, hopefully all um, foods that you enjoy. So definitely worth, worth the, um, the damage it does. Uh, so it's important to enjoy everything that you got from it. And once again, finding that meaning of the food. It's not everyday food. You're not eating like this every month. It's not an average month and you can always do better next month. So don't beat yourself up about it. It's not worth it. And finally, the last bit of advice is just in amongst all this festive eating, try to fill the space in between with as much health as possible. So, you know, if you've got quite a few um, uh, festive days of um, over a certain week, maybe you might wanna go for a few extra walks or just try and be a bit more physically active just to feel like you're making up for it in some way, definitely in um, by no means doing it obsessively or anything like that, but um, definitely, uh, just trying to do something a little bit extra um, on your non-festive days. So once again, if you've got a few days um, of, of um, uh, eating, all the days in between, just eat lighter meals, maybe less meals. I think a lot of us do this naturally. So if you've had a huge day of stuffing yourself to the point where you can't move, the next day you just naturally can't eat as much so just eat more of your lighter food some good protein some vegetables um, and just get yourself ready for the next festive meal that's coming up um, and this I think is a really good tip as well that I need to practice myself as well and um, that is when you get all the food presents um, so if you're thinking the chocolates the cakes the biscuits all of that a lot of it doesn't have to be eaten immediately it, it will sit for a little while before it goes bad. So um, save it for a boring month, a month where, you know, there isn't anything exciting and you feel like something special. You might remember, oh, I've got that box of chocolates at the back of the cupboard. Let's, let's take that out. Um, so that way you're spreading it out a bit more um, or you can share it with others. So, you know, open the box when there's people around to share it with. Um, because I know myself, if I open it by myself, I will eat it by myself. Um, or even uh, gift it to other people who you know will enjoy it just as much. Um, that way, once again, you're not doing too much damage on yourself. And of course, so no matter what happens over December, maybe you might wanna just blank your mind and um, just forget about health goals and power through till January. And that's okay as well. Most people do sort of put their healthy thinking caps back on in January and that's where you reorientate yourself to your new goals um, and hopefully come up with some sort of plan. Hopefully the health goal didn't go too out the window. There wasn't too much weight gain, but if there was, that's okay. Um, it's about being kind to yourself to help yourself get back on track. Um, and that point, that's when you can book in to see a dietitian like myself. I do definitely get a bit of a rush in January, I think, of um, 
people trying to make up for what happened in December. So hopefully that has given you a bit of guidance in terms of how to moderate yourself a little bit better during um, December, how to approach the grazing boards, the meals, the desserts, the drinks in a way where you have more awareness of what you're doing. And then you can make that informed choice and you can decide, am I going to 100% commit to this meal and doesn't matter the consequences or maybe I'll just keep track of it because I really don't want to lose too too much sight of my goal um, so really deciding where you fall on that spectrum um, because it's it's your life it's your health journey um, and you can do whatever you like but the important thing is to not feel guilty um, and to enjoy your time uh, during December so with that I'm going to end it here Thank you so much to everyone who joined from Facebook. I'm sorry for the big technical difficulties I was having earlier. Um, but if you've got any questions or anything, please feel free to send me a message. Um, always happy to chat. Um, but otherwise, have a lovely December and enjoy all the food that's coming your way. I know I am. <laughs> Take care, everyone, and I'll um, see you all later.